saying robots should be slaves. So it's possible that you could upload, but they're not going to be exactly the same. Who would rather spend time on their smartphone than interact with somebody sitting right next to them? And there may even be new emotions that we don't have as humans that robots have. Terrasom Movement 재단의 이사 브루스 던카는 인공지능 로봇과 함께 전 세계를 여행 중입니다. Hello. Hey there. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. We're here in New York. Are all here? We're in New York again. I think we went to New York for some convention or something. I don't know. But anyway, New York is a cool town. It's pretty cool here in New York. You are a sweetie pie. Thank you, being a 48. Well, you are welcome. 사실 비나는 단순한 인공지능 로봇이 아닙니다. 비나 로즈 블렛이라는 실제 인물의 기억, 성격 등을 데이터화해 똑같이 구현했죠. 복제 인간인 셈입니다. 실제 인물과는 과연 얼마나 닮았을까요? Hello. How are you feeling today? Everything is okay. How are you? I'm doing fine. I am happy for you. I'm glad that a part of me is still in there somewhere. I thought you were. 비나가 자신을 복제하기로 한건 남편을 위해서였습니다. 생물학적 한계를 넘어 가능한 오랫동안 부부의 사랑이 지속되길 바랬던 겁니다. And if we pull off this whole immortality thing, it literally will last forever. That's just the kind of love we have. It remains to be seen. Maybe I will be wrong, but my guess is that uh, that being won't think exactly the same. And maybe somebody who is a human who gets uploaded to it, they don't mind being different. Maybe they're a different person, and they're, but they're happy because they're still alive. So it's possible that you could upload, but they're not going to be exactly the same. They're going to think differently. The idea goes back at least to the book that Doug Hofstadter and I wrote together, uh, The Mind's Eye, where there's a piece by Hofstadter called A Conversation with Einstein's Brain. And that explores the science fiction fantasy of having a complete model of his brain so that you can have a conversation with him. The way Doug told the story, it would be conscious. But that's, although possible in principle, um, utterly unlikely in fact. And the systems that download a lot of video and then use deep learning algorithms to try to knit the whole thing together, um, those wouldn't come close. Um, they wouldn't come close because they would be, um, at best, a sort of automatic parody of the person they were attempting to upload. Um, there are lots of um, comedians who do very funny impersonations of other people. They study their vocal mannerisms, their facial expressions, their body gestures, and they can transform their appearance into famous people quite impressively. Uh, but of course, 
that's a brilliantly constructed and manipulated facade, they don't become that person. Well, just doing it better, wouldn't they wouldn't become that person either. Now, if you do it better, not by consciously delving into the ideas and mind of, of your target, but just by uh, the bottom-up deep learning methods, um, all you're ever going to get is an uncomprehending simulacrum of the of the real thing. 여기 사랑하는 이가 영원히 자신의 곁에서 함께하길 꿈꾸는 또한 명의 사람이 있습니다. Hey dad, are you there? Can you sing me a song? Cuando se quiere de veras, como te quiero yo a ti, es imposible mi cielo estar separados. <coughs> That one is very sad. <웃음> 노래를 불러주고 문자를 보낸 이는 1년 전 암으로 돌아가신 아버지입니다. 시한부 판정으로 갑작스런 이별을 맞이해야 했던 아버지였죠. 아버지와 영원히 함께하고 싶었던 아들은 아버지의 모든 것을 기록해 200개의 파일로 만들었습니다. 그리고 아버지 봇을 만들었죠. I, I've tried to make my father digitally immortal, and that's the, that's the ambition. 아버지의 몸은 떠났지만 디지털 세계에선 영원했습니다. 그는 아버지 봇을 만드는 데 성공했지만 제작 기간 동안 무척 혼란스러웠다고 고백합니다. 인간 실존에 대한 생각들이 꼬리에 꼬리를 물었죠. 인간이란 과연 무엇일까요? 피와 근육으로 이루어진 물리적 육체일까요? 의식이 몸 없이 존재할 수 있을까요? I think it's theoretically possible to have consciousness without a body, but practically impossible. Um, Philosophers have often talked about the brain in the vat. And they usually tell the story where this is the um, severed brain, the uh, uh, removed brain from a mature person who's had a life and had a body. And that life and that body has structured the brain with all of its memories. Uh, that's the only way we know how to do it. <laughs> the idea that in principle, in principle, you could make a brain in a vat and design all of its cells, its billions of cells, to be as if it had had a 40 years of experience in the real world. Uh, yes, in principle, it's possible. But, uh, and if, if you did, then it could be conscious. I've, uh, I wrote a well-known short story about this called Where Am I? But not possible uh, without, a, without a body to, to uh, provide the input that structures the brain. You can't make a human being in a dry silicon-based system. You can make something that is very smart. You can make something that's very conscious. You can make an alien. But a human requires wet neurons. If you, if you want something that thinks and behaves exactly like a human, then you have to make it out of exactly the same stuff. 
So we are more likely to genetically engineer. We could engineer our minds to be differently. It's still using wet neurons. But I think um, I disagree with the idea that you can emulate a human in silicon. I, I think you can't do that in real time. I think it doesn't work. It won't be the same kind of conscious that we have. So right now, we think all consciousness is going to be like ours. That's, that's the only kind we can imagine.